Kaufman and uh, and Terrell, uh, I, I'm not hearing anything from them. So I was just checking to make sure my connection All right. Uh, as I as I said before, we are now on Facebook Live, and I am recording for YouTube. And the YouTube videos, I go and and I try to uh, edit, you know, and edit out. As, I don't. Uh, thank God we haven't had to edit out much. So thank God for that. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up with a word of prayer, if you don't mind. Father God, in Jesus' name, we do thank you for this day and this hour. How we feel at this moment. God, everyone that comes on this line, we ask that you would bless them, God. Make this a meeting and, and let us accomplish things that will glorify you, Father God. Our goal is to build an international musicians coalition and let us not stray from that. Keep us, God, your glory out of what we say and do, in spite of what we say and do. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone. All right, there we go. Um, hey, uh, Dave, how you doing? Are you with us? Fine. I, I thought I couldn't get in, but I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're in. You are in. Amen. Thank God. Uh, now, something's so, going, when I'm looking at your face, it looks like you're going, your face is going in and out. It is. It is. And I, I have no idea what's going on, but I tell you what, I'm going to try something. Uh, I think I'm, I um, took the green screen out of OBS, and OBS is a, a software program that I use, and it does not seem to be to have improved anything. So I don't know. We'll just, uh, yeah. Well, we'll, you know, I'll fix it next week. Every week is a different problem. Thank God for it. Amen. Because there is a every week. <laughs> huh? I guess we'll just contend with it. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, uh, yeah, just contend with it. You know, with me, I'm always messing with stuff, and well, who knows? Check, you know. check, check with your check with with your Zoom to make sure you don't have it set up for a virtual background. It, it might be it might be fighting the OBS setting. You know what? Uh, and that is a, that is very good. Thank you, Sam. I will do that right now. Sam Perryman, I see your hand up. You want to have something you want to say? I'll say it later. <laughs> <laughs> well, why would you say it later? Because I'm on the phone now. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. I thought I saw you raise your hand. I'm sorry. I did. I did. I did. Okay. Uh, okay. Sam, I just see a picture of you. Okay. Yeah, but see, there's something going in and out. And I think that's the program trying to take out the background in OBS. But uh, Sam gave me, Sam uh, Tobert gave me a great idea. I'm going to check it out. I'm just going to make sure that uh, my green screen isn't fighting. So anyway, here's the, here's the uh, Sam and I were talking just before you know we came on live, and he mentioned something that really struck a chord with me, and I wonder if we can uh, deal with that tonight. Uh, okay. As as a musician growing up, I'm not going to recount my whole story, but I basically did not have a childhood because from the age, from a very early age, you know, I was babysitting uh, and my mom and dad were saving money because they were saving up to buy a house, which meant they didn't have to pay a babysitter, but I got to, I got to do all of it, right? So from that point on, and at the age of 14, maybe 15 is when my uncle started his church and I went directly out of the house into the church uh, and I was, you know, soon, Soon thereafter, I started learning the piano, which meant all of my free time was spent learning piano. Where everybody else was out playing, partying, doing whatever they were doing, I was stuck trying to learn how to play. Now, that was of my own volition. I wanted to do that because I wanted to help out. But then it became ever increasing, like a cycle. The more you do it, the more you have to do it. And so my premise is, I have given up quite a bit to be a church musician, really? and I think we all have. And I wanted us to discuss that. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because, you know, people will look at this, people view what, you know, what we put out there, and again, we are live, so temper your conversation, please. But they look at that and they don't realize 
all the things that we go through. Most people don't realize that as a musician, what you had to give up to do what you do. Anybody want to jump in on that? Well, I can um, relate to that. I mm -hmm. can't really uh, relate to, you know, what you were saying about um, the fact that you didn't have that much of a childhood, but I have gone through a lot. Ever since I was seven years old, okay. mama, taught, mama, taught me, mama taught me on this uh, little chord organ, Silent Night. I never knew how to read music until I was 11. And I played for this quartet, all this all women quartet group. They were like, uh, 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 do this, do that. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. Didn't know what they were talking about until the man in the moon. And I played for two other choirs and I just went through the same thing. You don't know, and, and, and as far as that's because, and then it was some churches, uh, a, a couple of pastors that just wanted me to be faithful. You know, I, I've been through a lot myself and all of my 54 years has not been peaches and cream, but I made it over. I made it to where mm -hmm. I am today. I could teach piano lessons. I could teach voice. Uh, I do do workshops. I still uh, write gospel music. I write songs. But you're right. You know, a lot of people don't know. And a lot of people think everything was uh, easy. I, I always had a, a musical silver spoon. Not so much. Not, not so. They don't know how old I am. And okay. I get choked. And I get choked up every time I do this, y'all. I'm telling you, I've been through a lot. But the Lord has brought me. I wouldn't say He brought me through. I went through what I went through. I came out. Uh, well, it reminds me that that song that, that is a real nice song that John P. Key wrote. Uh, and uh, I think of the guy that's singing it, but it goes, I, I made it out. I made it out. Oh, I, yeah, I like that one. I love yeah. that song. Hey, man, I don't know what it is. I think it strikes a chord, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's just Dorinda, churchy, Dorinda you Clark. Know? Dorinda Clark sung a song like that too. I'm coming out yeah. with my hands up. Yeah. So. Yes, Sam Perry. I what I was what I was. I'm sorry. I didn't want to. I know that this is a salient moment, and I don't want to. I just was through. I'm yeah. Was through. I, I was only. I was only gonna say I like these changes of screens and stuff, and I'm getting pictures that I want to use, and so I think I'm gonna get in touch with. Uh, Reverend Clarence, after after we're done, <laughs> <laughs> I was okay. thinking about uh, Brother Tober because I know he's the technocrat, um, and maybe I, I'll contact someone because I want to try to use these. I can see some application. So that's what I was was gonna say when I was distracted by the phone. Call me, and I know if you call Sam, he will help. So just call. That's what we're here for. We we want to do this thing together. Uh, we want to build an international coalition for the purpose of helping each other. It ain't yeah. just got to be about chords and progression. You know what I'm right. I might right. be going through something that you you have dealt with you can help me with. And that's mm -hmm. this whole purpose. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm not going to take the time to keep calling out names, but just thank you. And just realize that we are on Facebook Live and I am recording to uh, YouTube so that I can edit that, kind of make it, you know, what we want it to be. All right, so our topic of conversation is what have you as a musician personally sacrificed for your craft? Hmm. Well. Listen, not everybody at once, okay? <laughs> well, I, I just want to wait because I always, I always come in first. I want to wait for someone else to talk, so. Okay, all right. Anybody else? Well, maybe you had a, a, a flowery bed of these and everything was peaches and cream for you. Uh, for me, it was not so much. And I'm not complaining about that because 
again, every decision I made, I made, and I have to suffer the consequences or the benefits of those decisions. So I'm not throwing a pity party, not blaming it, not bad. No. But no. I have made many sacrifices. I was uh, sharing with Brother Sam Colbert uh, before we went live that my grandfather, blessed party, passed. Uh, you know, he would always, there was always something in his voice when he would talk to me. And finally, I got him to talk about it one day. And he basically, you know, was saying, and these are my words, you know, that he was just a little concerned that he thought maybe I could have went into football, you know, and done a good job, you know, because I'm kind of heftily built. And I could have made a, made, made a name for myself in football. And he wanted to know, why are you spending all your time practicing at the piano? And, I, you know, I don't know if he's a music lover or not. Um, but it was, it was those kind of things. While all of my friends were out, you know, building relationship and rapport and, you know, becoming buddy, buddy, I was stuck in the house trying to learn a song, right? And uh, as I said earlier, I, I feel like I gave up my childhood. Uh, but I don't feel any urges to go out and buy a Quebec and, you know, try to, uh, you know, try to live my childhood again or my youth again. But I gave those things up. Yes, I gave them up willingly, but most people don't realize that as a, mu as a musician, all the things that we sacrifice, and that's what I want us to bring out, all the things that we sacrifice that people don't really realize we're doing. Exactly. As again, I, I said last week, they look at, at what we do and, and we do it so well, they think it's easy, right? But they have mm -hmm. no idea what we've had to do Monday, Saturday to make Sunday look good and easy. Can I get an amen on that? Somebody? Amen. Amen. If you, if you, if you look at that picture behind me, that, that young man was 18 years old. And I had wanted to, I'll let you see part of what, what it says. At 18 years old, that young man wanted to be the, 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 the newest musician out there striving to make his mark in the music industry. And I let him down because I stayed in church and did not go out into the music world, taking what I knew at 18 years old and sharing it with the world. Instead, I shared it with the church. So that, that dream never happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, as, as I think might be the case with a lot of us. And, and again, nobody's complaining. Nobody, you know, we did what we did. And I think we, we reaped some benefit from it. But again, well, don't say that too fast. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. Don't right. say that too fast because I can, I can truthfully, and this is one of the reasons why I'm in in this union. Let me tell you something. I'm looking for answers. I'm looking for fellowship. If there's a problem, as a musician, I want to let you all know what it is so that we can, you know, like through prayer, what have you. That's when when I used to be in that coalition under uh, the late Lavelle Lacey, I told the folk, I told the folk when I went, when I used to go to Looms in Chicago, that's when we would have uh, our meetings. And I just want to yes. make this short. I don't want to talk too long. Um, well, that's a pancake I, house for those who don't lose. Excuse me? I'm sorry. It's a pancake house. It's a pancake house. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> I said, y'all, I come here to complain. But at the same time, I want to get a solution Solution, some solutions to the problems that I've had, and mm -hmm. and 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 uh, it was under Lavelle. Well, Lavelle Lacey, you know, you know, he uh, uh, founded it. It was Julia Maddox, DeAndre Patterson, and uh, and uh, and I just tell him as to what I've been going through, and uh, uh, and I'm gonna tell you, don't nobody else complain up in here. David Brock will complain, but at the same time. God has got me to a place whereby I want, I just want solution. And see, that's what being in Christ is all about. Being, uh, getting the solution as a musician, I want to help who, who I can and I can say more, you know, as far as that's concerned. Um, sure. So anyone else <laughs> wants to talk, I don't want to talk too long. Uh, huh. Uh, Brother DeWitt, I see your I see your square lit up. You want to say something? Oh, my square is lit up. You, yeah, well, it what what Zoom does is whoever's talking, or I guess who's talking the loudest, it, it kind of lights up the square around them to let you know that's who's talking. So maybe wow. you don't, but if you if you want to have something to say, you certainly can. 
Well, you know, I gave up a lot. I gave up family functions. Uh, and uh, my father was a successful interior decorator. You know, I could have gone into that. But I wanted to be a musician. So I'm always uh, rehearsing. You know, mm -hmm. I gave that up. I gave up family functions to rehearse, to be hey, You know, uh, serious things in the family going on. And I'm... Uh, at the church, you know, uh, having to rehearse or whatever it was, but I wouldn't take that back, you know, you know, um, getting the latest equipment, you know, and the music didn't really pay for that stuff. I mean, I'm being honest with you, you know, yeah, I've always been it. able to, <laughs> to get it. I mean, they come up with something new every, uh, every day actually. And, uh, Music didn't pay for it a lot, but uh, I got it and still doing it, you know. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, give it away though. That time I, I'm no, I have no regrets. Yeah, I, I think I'm doing what God wanted me to do in my life, and that's the most important thing. Amen. All right, thank you, and I do appreciate that, I, and I wholeheartedly agree with you. you you know, I, I don't rule anything. Uh, I would just like people to know that, you know, when when you come to me wrong because you don't understand music or whatever, you know, I have paid for this. <laughs> I have paid okay. the price to be where I am and what I've done. All right. I think um, the age old the age old question is if you could go back in time and meet your younger self, what advice would you give give yourself? <laughs> well, I'm going to answer that because I've thought about that time and time again. My, my perception was wrong growing up. I believed it was God, church, and family in that order. All right. All right. Wrong. Sure. Wrong. All right. It should be God, family, family, and yeah. then church. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I have to apologize to my wife and daughter. I, what, where I was sacrificing, <clears throat> they were sacrificing also. Yeah, so, you know, thank God things are as well as they are, and I'm not complaining. Mm -hmm. But I still say, you know, musicians are anointed. We are special. Uh, and I, I mean that in the most sincere way. God has blessed us and gifted us, and we, we are paying back. But too often, as I heard somebody else say, when it comes to sacrifice, for some reason, we are expected to make a bigger sacrifice or more often. Yeah. Okay. I think I think I would. Um, you know, I, I I have a problem with complaining. I mean, okay. yeah, and I think you you probably when when we we've, we've spoken before, um, and I shared some things with you. If you you might have forgot. <laughs> it no, sounded I mean, like I, I needed to. I, 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 I. It sounded like I, I could perhaps use um, a dose of being a bit more assertive, and I, I, I think that there are things that I am assertive in, and sometimes I ask myself, but kind of in general, what do I care about? Um, and sometimes one can find out what he cares about by listening to what he talks about and what he complains about. And I, and the last thing I want to be. Um, thought of in especially in church circles, good or bad, as is a complainer, and I think that a lot of musicians do complain um, a bit to excess. Well, musicians I know of, because somehow um, one has to understand that you're not going to always get your way, and what really defines you is how True. you cope with that, right? True. And and so what what and, and what defines Christians to me more than anything else is not just how we love, but how we resolve conflict. There's a way to resolve it. And if I'm resolving my conflict the same way as someone else, then I don't think I'm really letting my light shine. So maybe that's across that, uh, to your point about uh, the shortcomings, maybe that's across that that I'm still uh, bearing. Typical e example, I guess, even in, in what I'm doing now is, you know, in some ways, I'm kind of feeling like the cart is, is driving the horse. Uh, but at the same time, I have to pick my battles. And and I, all battles I'm not interested in, right? So that that's 
I mean, may, maybe I haven't said much, but I'm just saying overall, I, I have to pick my own battles. That makes me feel better because I feel in control of what and how I behave when I pick my own battles, as opposed to allowing people's okay. idiosyncrasies. Because when you when you when you're dealing with a choir, even if it's five people, that's five different personalities, right? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I have to remember that as well. But anyway, that's enough. Okay. okay. Well, what well, thank what you. I want you to talked about about five, five, six different issues in there, but amen. We do thank you. Amen. Go mm -hmm. ahead, uh, David. Okay. I want to rephrase that as far as, you know, I said I want to come to complain. Okay. I did say that when I went to the coalition. I just want to rephrase that. I want to come with my problems. Okay. I want to come with my problems and get the solutions to the problems. One of them, and I really thank God that you did say, Clarence, about first is God, family, and church. Thank you. Thank you for saying that because you know why? There are some pastors that think that we as musicians don't have a life. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah, it's true. There's right. some that don't think that we have a life and we got to be faithful in the church. And again, I used to belong to a church whereby, okay, Sunday morning, okay, then Sunday afternoon, then I will find out the, at the last minute, the pastor, pastor wants us to go to this church on a Wednesday night, okay, and then the, then Friday night. And there's just some some pastors I'm not going to, no, I'm not talking about, uh, I used to go by this saying, 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 uh, I'm not talking about people, I'm just talking about what I'm talking, I'm talking about. about. <laughs> you know, and all of what I'm saying is this. There are some pastors that do, that would be thinking that we as musicians, also along with the music music department too. Oh, David, did you say that? Yes, I did. Because I've been there to a point that it was, it was this one, one, a couple of pastors here in the city that just don't actually think that we as musicians, that they think that we just don't have a life. They just they just want us to be uh, 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 occupied, yeah. With with engagement after engagement after engagement, and I have no problem with uh, uh, them, but my goodness, <laughs> Matthew eleven and twenty eight actually says, "Come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what rest. Rest. You yes. need rest. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, and things like right. that." You know, not not any of this. I just came from a recording Saturday night, and then Sunday I don't know. Well, we got to go out of town. I, that happened to me one time. You know, and mm -hmm. I got tired of it. Yeah, I you know, Dave, and and I agree with you. I think we've all had situations like that where things were thrown on us at the last minute, in the line of things that we give up. For example, I worked at a I once was at a church and we had a, a weekday engagement and the choir didn't show up. But the choir didn't get called on the carpet. <laughs> it was me. Like, where was the choir? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, I like I'm supposed, I guess I was, I don't know what I was supposed to do, but I'm just saying, and and so as a man, you know, if you come at me a certain way, I, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost and love the Lord, but I still got some buttons that can be pushed, right? I'm sure. working to hide those buttons. Yeah. All right, so if, if you know, come to me with respect, you know, with mutual respect, because that's exactly how I'm going to respond to you. But again, just like you said, David, sometimes, and I'm not saying all pastors get that. No, I'm not no. saying all pastors. I'm no, some pastors do not respect <clears throat> your gift. To them, you are a hired employee, and they want you to produce as a hired employee. Uh, forget, you know, the year, again, the years that you have put into your training. I don't think anybody on this line or anybody that's listening that is a musician has got to where they are because you didn't practice and practice often and practice a lot. Well, it's one thing to practice, but what to do in your practicing? See, I used to bump with, with a, a church with a pastor that all he wants me to do is play on Sunday mornings, Sunday afternoons, annual days, revivals, and things like that, but did not even care about anything as to how I got uh, trained as far as hymns are concerned, 
uh, 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 we will go over the hams. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it right here. When I play <laughs> for this uh, one church, and I do hams every uh, every you know every worship service. But they hit one they hit one this one ham, and I knew how to cite I cite read any a ham no ham no. But the congregation didn't even know how to sing it. Wow! Wow! But I knew how to sight read. I could sight read anything, you know, and things like that. And I told the pastor, as well as I told the directors, I said, we need to have a hymn rally. Have everybody who, who's available, if it's nothing but the uh, 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 congregation, get the hymnals, and I will show them how the hymn goes. Even if I had to teach them, how to do soul pitch, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, you know, and know how to, know how the melody goes. And there's just some people that, I, I mean, I came from establishment. I, I, I mean, I, I, I used to be Church of Christ, which we didn't have a choir, but we did hymns every worship service. And they had a rally, a hymn rally to be established. Oh, but you just come up here, oh, we're gonna do hand on number, such and such a number. Oh, and I played, and I played the, the hymn, and I'll say this and I'll be, I played the hymn, but did nobody know how to sing the song? Yeah, Amazing. you know, you just made me think about something. If, if somebody else wants to say something, please, Um, I was in at a church, and they were having like their hundred, you know, their millionth anniversary of being in existence, and I decided, they, they gave me a theme, and I decided to write a hymn, and uh, again, I'm not saying that I'm not boasting. I'm, I'm just making a point here. Yeah. I wrote a song. It was beautiful. The choirs loved it. And we sang it twice. But the audience, the congregation couldn't sing the song. They had never heard the song, right? So I guess my point is, it, you suggested a rally, and this is a little bit off topic, but since we're here, uh, one of the suggestions I make to musicians all the time is, Rather than change the hymn every Sunday, for example, pick hymn of the month. Do that hymn before Sunday so the people can learn it. If you sing a different hymn and you introduce the hymn, as you just said, David, how are the people going to sing it if they don't know it? If they, if don't, they don't know it, it, if they've never heard it before, right? It takes they a while for it to sing it. Like the the you know some of the churches I I played for, they only they had a stock number of hymns, maybe ten, if that many. That they sung all the time, but they sung them all the time because that's what the choir, that's what the audience knew, right? Mm. And so it was difficult to introduce a new song because if people don't know it, they can't sing it. And then the pastor's looking at you like, you know, what's up? So anyway, that was my suggestion. Yes, Sam Perry. I was, uh, I was, well, I had something else, but since you're talking about that, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to do this year, we have uh, four slots. Well, there were actually when I went to this church, which is in the last six months, um, there were two times when the choir comes up and sings, but there is a first and second passing of the offering plate, right? And so one of those, uh, what's called the missionary offering, I think that's a good time to introduce that re revolving song. Uh, without it being as disruptive as the morning hymn. And so what we right. do is we do something that they know and feel more comfortable with uh, for the morning hymn. And during uh, that first passing, we do something new every Sunday that month. And then perhaps do it at the end of, at the beginning of the next month as our major hymn. Uh, but that, that, that was what I was going to contribute to that. But I also I like want to go back. Thank you. I also... I also wanted to go back and, and I don't know whether this is necessarily off topic, but it certainly to me relates to uh, doing a whole uh, lot of stuff. Uh, it, is there a difference between being, an, uh, being a wage, W-A-G-E musician, as opposed to being on salary? Because my, my impression is if you are given a salary and oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes the salary looks a bit better than their wage. But if you're on salary, then that sort of means that, uh, in my head, that you're on call. And I don't like to necessarily be on call, but that would then speak to they want me to do be all over the place. They want me to go out and do so forth and so on. And I know the bottom line is that the, the truth of the matter is in the negotiation. 
But what I am saying is, is there a such thing, uh, have you heard of a such thing as a musician who's on salary? I mean, there are people who make big money in Washington, and I don't think that's wage, that's salary. And that means that every time they look at somebody, whether it's something, the quad didn't do what they're supposed to do, they look at the person who's on salary. And, and I'm wondering what you thought about that. Uh, that's an interesting thought. The fact that you brought it up plays directly into our purpose for being. We, this is the kind of negotiation, the kind of discussions that all musicians should be having so we can help each other out. But now I'm, I'm not, what's the, what in your mind is the difference between a wage musician and a salary musician? Does wage mean, uh, what, what does well, that mean? Well, actually, I, I, I think I think Arvell has a contribution to it. Okay. That's all I let Go him ahead. Go ahead, Arvell. I was just going to say, I think wage would cover specific duties. Maybe Sunday morning, uh, Sunday afternoon, or you know, per duty or per service, where a salary would be straight across the board. Yeah. And it would include everything, or even as, you know, some job descriptions say, other duties as a sign. I hate that. Yeah, yeah. that's horrible. <laughs> so in your yeah, mind, is. wage is, it could be a, you know, some somebody's sick and they can't play this Sunday, so you get somebody else. And they are, they are paid, but they are they are considered wage because there, there are really no other expectations on them. Might be, are and you talking right. to me? And because they can uh, duties can fluctuate. Okay, right. So so then a wage musician salary would fluctuate, possibly from week based to week. Based on duty. Based on, based the, on duty. duty. Well, and, I. And, I was, no. I, when I was thinking of it, when I was thinking of it, and I think it's probably more pr prominent in the, in the business world, but there are people who are on salary and their job is to be at the beck and call of their director. And if he calls you at three o'clock in the morning, you can't complain because you're on salary, which means that you probably have a bigger nest egg than someone who's paid $17 an hour to be there from nine to five. Well, your, your job doesn't end then. And so the, the way I was looking at this as it relates to musicians, and I don't think necessarily that the pay system in the church uh, popularly reflects that people are just given a wage, a, a salary or whatever they get, they're given. And people just pin these, these uh, expectations on musicians as if they're salaried. We just give you money, and because we are paying you, you're supposed to show up when we say so. It's probably the, the mindset. But mm -hmm. it just occurred to me that if I am um, paid uh, based on X, Y, Z, then that may mean something different than they're paying me $30,000, $40,000 to, to be the director of this music. And so when I decide that I want to raise some issues that may be construed as con complaining, then I can't because my salary says that that's part of my job description. That's why I wanted to wind up. Okay. Right. So uh, in, in, if in I may, yeah. Yeah, if yeah. I may say something for my last 19 years as a church musician, I was the music director slash organist for a United Methodist church. When I sat down with them to go over my duties and responsibilities, I was considered a independent contractor in the United Methodist church if you're going to be a quote unquote, a director of music, you're supposed to sit through six years of seminary and you're supposed to be a member of the United Methodist Church. But because they were at a loss for a musician, they put a little disclaimer in their own doctrine where I could be called a music director, but a independent contractor, which means I have no say so in how the church functions. I am salaried and duties and responsibilities are are typed out and and told me for what for what Sundays I play, how many choirs I play for, and it's ironclad with and it was all for and it was for a, a one year only, which could be revoked anytime within thirty days of that contract being written, which I appreciated because I knew what was expected from me. They knew not to ask for anything anymore, and if they did, it was up to me if I was going to do it and ask for more money. But it wasn't like oh, we now need you to be here on a Sunday afternoon. We now need you to be here. Uh, on a Saturday morning, they had to ask me, are you available? We're having something. 
we will give you additional compensation for that, which I appreciated because they respected my time. And it came with automatic two weeks vacation. Ah. Wow. wow. Did you you just blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, that that I mean that that to some extent, that to some extent that plays into my narrative about complaining. Because when I decide to pull the book on a person, and what I call pull the book is um, we have this agreement. And pastor says something or asks me for something that's not on that agreement. Yeah. How I handle that might be a little different than someone else. I, I just don't get up in arms and say, well, we didn't agree with that because I'm, I'm sort of one of those, well, I'm going to get it back in some kind of way. Like I said to you, uh, Reverend Blair, I'm planning to be out of the country for a whole month. And even though the pastor told me, I guess she ain't watching <laughs> uh, <laughs> look i'm one of those people who voted down what you asked for she said that and i ain't mad at her because i know i'm gonna need to be out because they want to hold me up to this high standard because they give me this little money but here is god working it out for me whereas although i don't have what it is that i think that i should get minimally uh, i'm gonna need some favors as well and so I, it becomes a matter of bartering with the right attitude for me and some people might think that, you know, that's just being a welcome mat, but I just think it works for me. And I just wanted to raise that in, 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 in relationship to what uh, Brother Sam shared. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I, I hear you. Um, yeah. Mo so wh what are most musicians you think? Most, do you think most musicians, church musicians are waged? I would say so. Outside of my, out of my experience. I don't think so because that kind of that kind of imp implies that you know more than you know. Most most churches probably don't know what musicians are paid, and if there was a standard uh, that say we put out, musicians are paid thirty dollars an hour, and I don't know whether I necessarily want to go to a church that paid me thirty dollars an hour. <laughs> and so, in some ways, and I've heard, I've I've heard this too, Sam. We're paying you a whole lot of money because if you look at what we're paying you, we're only in here for two hours, and you're getting five hundred dollars. I don't know nobody who's getting two hundred fifty dollars an hour, right? What? So, but I I don't know what people necessarily grab their amounts from. But I just think that, especially in our church, and what in many of them. You know, we come up with this amount generally. Now, with, with Sam Talbot, he might be different <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> uh, but we come up with this. We come up with this amount, and we agree with it. And you know, I think it's three or four hundred dollars for a service or something is an unreasonable. But I don't think of that in the context of wage because then I have to think about how am I going to subdivide that and how am I going to compare that with what's being paid somewhere else. And I don't think people want to get into that. So the answer is, I don't think that we're on a wage system. People are just paid and the expectation is that you're going to be a salaried person because you're getting money. That's me. <laughs> okay, you know, and I never really thought about it, but I, I do know in, in my total history, I have only played for one church that I was not a member of. Really? And that is the kind of barely, I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm scared I'm out of that, but every other church, uh, for, for whatever reason, I felt the need to join them, and I gave 150% if that's possible. I know, I know that's an exaggeration. I, I believe you. But I gave and gave and gave. I was the one whipping the choir in place, making sure they were, you know, they made the church engagement, you know, conducting rehearsals and, and you know, paying my tithe, you know, telling them, wow. taking out my check for, for it even get to me, right? I mean, I, I went the full gamut but i never thought if i was salaried away and i i don't know maybe maybe i was salary but you know I, I gave i really believe in every situation i gave much more than they contract were paid for i never i never had a contract which is a problem i understand that now that's what we can do as a group we can encourage younger musicians get the paperwork make sure that's correct now that makes sense it yeah. does I don't know. I don't think I would ever walk into a church and demand a uh, two week vacation, uh, especially the church where I am that's struggling. And, and I probably shouldn't say that. So you'll edit that out. Um, right. But I just I just think that that's that, that's a recipe. That's a recipe for me not getting that job. Well, um, I'm sorry. Why should you have to sacrifice? 
I see, but that that's that's different. See, see, uh, for a church that's struggling, I can understand that. But, you know, uh, but but when it comes to if the pastor can go on vacation, see, I don't do that either. I see, mean, that I, is, I, 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 yeah. I hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right, right. But see, I can understand where you're coming from when you said with with a church that's I'm sorry. I'm bamming on this table. I know. But, calm um, down, man. Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Uh, so uh yeah, with a with a church that's struggling, I'll help them, you know, if it were to be me. But I'm at a a, a church where about if the pastor's going on vacation. A similar choir members are going on vacation. Why not me? But the churches, but the pastor does. I don't know one church, I and mean, there are some that that I don't know one church that where a pastor doesn't go on vacation and probably get paid. And so if somebody's not going to get paid, guess who that's going to be, <laughs> right? And all I'm saying is, well, for the other thing is the average church has about 100 members. And so we're really talking about this extra or these um um unordinary churches because most churches are, I can't say most, but I think that uh, pr it's probably true that uh, a big a percentage of churches have very small memberships and, and perhaps small budgets right. as well. Right. I, I can understand that. Yeah. I can understand that perfectly. With and, small... and I think that that's where I would prefer to be in these small places. I That it's just me. And it's not because I want to be a big fish in the small pond or anything like that. But I really, I, I value building relationships. And I think that sometimes I can stand in the way of a relationship. Even if I'm right, sometimes I have given up what I think is right in order for this to work. I mean, there is this, you know, that there's this lady at a at my at one of my rehearsals who wanted to come for me because, you know, I was giving her an alto part and she said that ain't right because, you know, whatever reason. You know, how I how I handled that says something about my leadership. Oh, exactly, exactly. Now, I was just thinking, again, I, I can only go by my experiences, but I've never had a, a, a position that paid twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm every bit worth that, but I've never had that, but I still gave. And so, uh, uh, Sam, when you said that, I, I automatically assumed we were talking about churches that could afford it. There are many churches cannot and who knows what's going to happen after uh, you know this pandemic when when clears up because the churches were emptying out even before the pandemic. The, that whole millennial crew is missing, and if they don't come to church, they don't bring their children to church. So a lot of churches were suffering. So it remains to see how this thing is going to pan out in the future, which to me is all the more reason why we need to come together. We need to. You know, as a as a group, we should come up with some kind of uh, recommendation. Well, what if if this is a church that you know had a budget of, you know, uh, you know, a huge budget before the pandemic, but now they don't. Uh, so you should take that. You should not be paid, or you should take money. Now that's an ethical question. Because, you know, I can't tell you what what you should or should not do. But if if you the Bible says the servant is worthy of his hire and do not muscle. There you go. Yeah. The smile of the oxen that treadeth the corn. Now, I'm not saying we we need to be, you know, make $30,000 a year, but I, I believe when you when you ask people to volunteer, that even goes as far as singers and choir. When you ask people to volunteer, you have to take whatever they give you. But if I give you a salary or a wage or whatever, whatever you want to call it, I have a right to expect excellence out of you. Regardless of what you're paying, is, is, that, is, that the, is that the predicate of that? Because I mean, there are, there are in myself as an example, there are mm -hmm. churches who are not paying well, but they expect way more than they're paying for. And yeah. which is, I think the, <laughs> which is, I think, which is, yeah really the conflict um, mm -hmm. and how do you and, and, and for me it's not I, I don't I don't like playing that bible card I, I really don't and I, I, I don't want to sound pejorative about that but I do not pull scripture out on people uh, serving as where they know the scripture uh, but 
But I, I do I do wonder how how do you get to this place? Uh, Pastor, look, you want 10 things for this salary. You may want to think about five, right? Uh, that's quite a different conversation than talking about the money side of it. Because yeah. I think that I have enough to do and I don't want you to pay me more to do more because I'm tired and I don't want to do more even if you're paying me well. Uh, but maybe maybe we can't have that praise team for whatever reason. How do you have that kind of conversation I think might be more fruitful in the long term than just talking about money? Because I don't want to leave people thinking that if you paid me more, I would do more. I, I think I'm already operating at max capacity and I'm not paid well, <laughs> right? I'm grateful, but I don't need more to do is what I'm getting at. What I did was to put it in writing I actually That's drafted it. a. I actually drafted what I did uh, to the pastor of the church. I put down how many choir members I have in each group that I play for, how many mm -hmm. rehearsals I'm expected to be at, how many services throughout the year I'm expected to be at, how many outings I have during the year, other than the normal church. How many revivals I put it in as a Bible, as the scriptures. You know my scriptures, but I always find the ones that, that I can use too. I may, I wrote the vision and I made it plain. This is what you expect from me. This is what I need from you. And my response was, well, what if everybody in the church wanted to be paid for what they do? You know, and you hit the nail right on the head. Put it down and write it. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Put it down in writing, not so much of, okay, what's put down here. And then all of a sudden you're going to put, uh, 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 give me some more new rules or new, new things to do. Wait, 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 like, wait a minute. Oh. Okay. We want to organize this quiet. Okay. So. <laughs> how, do, how, how do we contend? I want to hear that. How do we contend with that? Because I'm one of those people that I'm one of those people and I, I'm probably the wrong one <laughs> because I know I value relationship building. And sometimes that gonna, that's going to mean that something's going to go outside the margins. How do we deal with that in a non-adversarial way? Well, when it's in writing, there is no emotion involved. I, I got that that's part. It. That's not the point. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I didn't, I mean, I didn't mean okay. like that. I, I, I apologize. Well, that's, uh, but Sam, that wasn't what I was getting at. My point is, my, my point is I, I'm playing for three choirs and there's a special event. It might, it might run for three months, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a part of my job description, but it's something in addition. Maybe it's something that is added as an addendum. But I'm just saying how we handle that really says a lot about our relationship, my relationship with the pastor and whomever. And I just I just want to always sort of leave some leeway so that we can kind of work around. Because as I said before, there are some places I'm going to be excessive in my absences and they don't like that. But at the same time, and I wouldn't pull it out on them. But at the same time, they're asking me for a whole lot of stuff. And a lot of that stuff I'm, you know, I'm just doing because I have my own agenda, I guess. And so I really wanna hear more conversation around how to, how to work that out in a way that doesn't kind of make me feel like I'm either on this side or on that side, because I don't think that that works too well for me. Uh, then I have this to say, and, I, and I, won't, I won't say anymore. When I started seeing spots before my eyes and passed out after service in the church, I went to my doctor the very next day. He diagnosed me as borderline, hypertension. He told me whatever I'm doing, stop it. That's when I began cutting my duties in the church. Well, I, uh, go ahead, Arvell. You want to say something? No, no, no. I was just saying, okay, to what Sam was saying. I was in agreement. You yeah. know, when it gets to a point that we find our health being affected for the sake of being a quote unquote good musician, uh, then it's time to take a look. Somebody's phone is, uh, I, I don't know what that is. I hear in a sound. I'm not sure what that is. But yeah. I, I heard you, Arvel. Can I just, can I can I give it a, a different perspective? And it oh, may or may not fit into where, where you guys are. But um, if you were to list all of the things that you do for the salary you get. Okay. And, you, and then whatever reason you leave that church and they find somebody else to do exactly what you do 
do you think they're going to pay them the same amount or are they going to have to pay them more? Well, they, when I my, left, they got three times more. <laughs> Uh, My experience is that they're not going to find somebody who's going to do. There are there are teachers in the classroom who go beyond the call of duty, and there are teachers who do only what their contract says. And I'm one of those teachers who go beyond the call of duty. And and if Sam came behind me about ten things I do, he ain't going to do because maybe he don't want to do it. For example, and so I only huh? If he does, does, yeah. If he does, yeah. Right. I to your point. Yeah. So that's the answer to me. What were you about to say, Tobert? Uh, when I left my home church, because I had, because I had decided that um, I had I had fulfilled my responsibility after twenty five years, my replacement played for less choirs and got paid three times more. See, yeah, wow, and that kind of stuff happens. That's the reason I raised that point, huh? God, did you hear that? Why do you think that was, Sam? Why do you think that was? I want to know. It had gotten personal. What do you mean? I always have this this um, uh, thought process that if if I can't respect the person, I can't respect their position. I don't like to be preached to. I don't like to be the subject of, of a, a message over the pulpit. Me neither. Me and neither. When, when yeah. it, I don't think any of us. When, yeah. when it got to a message where some of these musicians want as much as some of these pastors make, and I'm sitting there on the organ, <laughs> I said, okay, you just you've just opened the door for me to mm-hmm. from, from, from for, me to or for me to leave. Right. Exactly. And I was I was confronted like that during service. He said something uh, about me, and that just struck a chord with me. And I had to uh, do me a favor, uh, people. I'm sorry, David. Yeah. People, put your phone, your uh, mic on um, mute, please. And when you want to talk. You know, we'll acknowledge you and then take the mic off. Because somebody's having real a lot of staticky problems with their phone. I don't know who it is. I don't get that kind of feedback. All right. Uh, sorry, David. Go ahead. You were talking. Yes. Um. Okay. I just took the mute out. Yes. It was one particular Sunday when I used to belong to this church, and um, and he said that the pastor said something about me in front of the congregation over the pulpit. And I'm like, can you hear me? No, go ahead. Oh, five minutes. And and, and I had to pull him over to the side and and say, hey, let's talk about this. Because I did not even know. You know, I I, I don't like to be outed like that. That, That's all what I wanted to say. That's all. Yeah. Um, Sam Perriman, I had the thought, you know, maybe I was reading too much. And when you asked Sam, why did what, why did that situation happen where it did? I thought I thought you were asking why did they pay have to pay him three times more? Where is that where your head was or no? I wasn't asking necessarily why they had to pay him, but why they paid him. Perhaps and then what I was where I was gathering what I was going for because Sam, I think you know, I don't I know who I am. I know my worth. That's a caveat. I, Sam brings a lot of stuff that maybe I don't. Sam brings a pedigree that maybe I won't. But at the same time, I very well might bring something that tickles them in a way that Sam doesn't. And then they and then they may have a little problem because of the, the fact that he might throw the book at him. And so I thought that some of the solution in that might, some of the reason for that high salary might be because look one I like him I like his attitude I like the fact that I can run over him whereas I can't run over Sam I like the fact that he can play some stuff and he's willing to go an extra mile all of that is kind of what I sort of was sifting through when I asked the question why because you know if, if Sam is doing the same thing that they were doing then perhaps the salary should have been the same so that's why I was asking and Sam, I'm sorry you want to preach? No, no, no. You're not preaching. We listen. We are. We all have opinions, and as I said, we right. We, that's we, all, that's right. all. what it's all about. Yeah. yeah so, I wasn't I saying I knew. I don't know. Right. I just wanted to know, according yeah. to him, what he thought it was. Yeah. It could have turned out like they don't like me. I don't know. I just wanted to hear what he said. Oh, 
in a nutshell, because I could, I, I was being, because I was being given information, you know, sometimes when you leave a church, you don't want to be showing up every time there's a service to sort of you know, rub it in their eyes. I'm not here. There's the new guy. But if what word would get back to me, you know, now they're serving this guy juice every Sunday when I never got it. Uh, this guy's <laughs> younger than I am and he's playing for less choirs and he's not doing all the things I was doing. And I just said, you know what? I, if I open up a door so that somebody else can be blessed more than when I was, then I've done my job because I didn't leave with any ill feelings. I left because I said, I need to do something that's going to be less work, but more pay. And that's what I found. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, we're in our final two minutes. And uh, I just want to say, I'm laughing because I saw a post on Facebook today and they were, and this person was saying, you know, if you play for a shouting church, you're a poor musician. <laughs> so the comment was the, the churches that like to shout a lot, they don't often pay too much. <laughs> so, it's like the quiet churches where you know where the budget is paid. I blame you. 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 Wow. All right, it is now 7.59, and I do thank you, and I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your input. Again, I felt like we had a, an exciting meeting. Now, maybe that just says, you know, I'm so bored, talk excites me, but it does. Maybe. I'm at that age now where I don't need a whole lot of drama. I just, Amen. No. I, want to, I want all to be well, and I, I want to be happy, and I want everybody else to have, be happy. So I'm, I'm happy. mad at you about what you do, how you live. Amen. Okay. Uh, anybody have any final uh, any final remarks before we log off? Uh, just just briefly, I got in on the tail end, cause but I want to say uh, I really gathered a lot from what everybody said, and you know, we that goes along with us not putting down uh, what we do for the Lord. And uh, I know people, well, well, you know, you know, because they're, they're quick to say, you know, oh, you, you're just doing, you, you're trying to get paid. No, I mean, come on now, you pay everybody. That's the else. word. You pay professional people for what they do. Why yeah. not God's musician? Why not give him the best? You mm-hmm. know, about it. Yeah. Him or her. Amen. We him or her, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm him sorry. Or her. <laughs> him or her. You're right. Listen, I totally agree. I'm going to give you just one example, then we're going to pray out. Um, if there's a funeral, the funeral director gonna get paid. Oh yeah, thank you. The pastor gonna get paid. Thank yeah. you. The florist gonna get paid. Thank oh, yeah. you. But it's always a musician, you know. And I've been in situations that they're like, well, you know, we have. Okay, that's all right. Because I don't argue with nobody, especially about money. And let me say this in closing: that uh, everything that we said is we're not complaining. Right. I want it to be clear. We are stating the, the stating the obvious that we as musicians, we give up a lot. We sacrifice a lot. We had to sacrifice a lot. And we pay dearly for our gift. Amen. Yes. It was a gift from God, but we had to expand on it. And we pay dearly for that. And I'm still saying if you, and for those of you who think musicians are money hungry, whatever, we still got to put our clothes in the cleaner. We still got to buy gas. We still got come on, on and on and on. And so I have paid dearly. I have sacrificed for what I for where I am. And I think I ought to be remunerated. Now I'm not gonna go and try to pull blood out of the cabbage. Church cannot afford it. You do what you do because we don't do what we do for money. I'll say that again, somebody. We don't do what we do for money, but it's fair that we be remunerated fairly. Amen. Amen. All right. I, I, all right. I, it's all right. I said it. I stand by. It. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I love you all and ain't nothing you can do about it. Let's just listen to prayer. You good. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time. God, we thank you that we had this meeting. And God, we thank you that we felt free enough to be able to speak our minds. And uh, God, we just ask that you would get glory out of this and that you would help us to build this international coalition of musicians, that we can be a help to each other. Father God, give us sweet rest and peace and sweet dreams. And uh, tonight, let your guardian angels stand watch above us. 
And Father God, bring out of this group millionaires and billionaires and those who have uh, other uh, prosperous streams of income. Do it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody in agreement will signify so by saying amen. 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 God bless you. I hope to see you All next right, week. I'm still excited. Still excited. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Praise God. I enjoyed Praise this God. meeting. Yes, I Me did. Too. Me too. God bless you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm going to call you, Clarence. Okay. <laughs>